Good morning traders, Richard doing a quick big picture market review of the major market indices in view of the recent sell-off. We'll start with the NASDAQ. Uh, we can see that uh, the NASDAQ is now down more than 10%, uh, much needed 10% correction after the index became very extended. And we can see on the weekly how steep the slope of the line was. And the market's now consolidating. And at the moment, it uh, is heading and looking for support in and around these old highs here. Yeah. So it's digging into these old highs. Now it will be critical for the market to start finding support in and around these levels. And also we have um, the markets pretty close to the 144 day moving average. Yeah. We can see there's a, the day before yesterday was a huge move. The volume was high, but not higher than the previous day. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a big up day of more than a percent. Uh, you know, the higher the better, but it should at least be more than a percent to one percent gain. And the volume should be lo higher than the previous day. So ideally what we're looking for is a situation something like this here, or um, you know, another one like that day there. So this is encouraging to see that the NASDAQ is fighting for support. Will be interesting to see what the market's going to do today if it's going to have a follow through of this kind of support zone because it's testing this support level here of 12.204. And these highs, these old highs here, are the new support levels. So we will see if the market can, can rebound from these levels. But a much needed 10% correction, so it's critical for the NASDAQ to find support. That if support fails, then we're going to hit these levels down here, the bottom end of these uh, of the support zone. But I think we might get a rebound from this 144 day moving average in the market. But what we're looking for is a huge up day with a above average volume. So it's critical to see if the NASDAQ will come through in that. Now the current sell-off, the index is below the 55 day moving average so that means we you know you can still sit in cash and just keep tight stop losses on your sp respective stocks but I wouldn't necessarily rush into anything uh, aggressively now. Uh, look for stocks that are basing the bottom end of bases etc. Stocks that are pulling back to key support areas those are all the ones to, to, to add to your watch list and to monitor. But ideally you don't want to own anything that's below, uh, you don't want to own the market at all if it's below the 55 day moving average. So, and that's the critical thing here yeah, that the NASDAQ needs to rebound, find support here yeah, and then we'll swing trade that back up as the, you know, the, the, the rally resumes. However, the current correction started to signal some uh, warning signals here. Yeah. We had a quite a couple of selling above average selling days yeah and there was a whole cluster of them and they just kept coming so by the time we got to uh, this uh, 13,000 level then that gave us a comfort that the market's now running into this correction phase it dipped below the 55 day and then the taps just opened for it to pull back to 144 day so that's the risk 144 looking for rebound yeah these old highs here yeah, should give an idea if support will come back in the market and we're looking for a big volume day m higher than the previous day so today's volume needs to be above this level yeah and beat that that uh, volume there let's look at the S&P S&P is still finding support of the 55-day average, so that's uh, so far so good for the for the S&P 500. There's somewhat sector rotation taking place. We'll look at that in a minute, but the S&P is now finding support of the 55-day average. As long as this index stays above that level, we we're still bullish on the market. But if it starts to dip below, then it's also going to go into bearish territory, similar to the Nasdaq, and then these highs here would be the downside uh, uh, target in the market. We have had a few above average selling days. You can see these little spikes here at the bottom. These market distribution days, above average selling. That is uh, similar to the NASDAQ. So if the, if the S&P keeps collapsing below this level, then you know, all bets are off, as they say. Um, we also, the market briefly dipped below the 55 day. And if it dips below the 55 day again and continues, then the, 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 the bull market rally is over for the time being. So if we're going to look at the individual sectors, we'll just look at the spider ETFs here. Uh, the communication sector, that's still looking strong, uh, trending higher. Uh, XLI, let me just make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see what what these ones are. 
The industrial sector also trending nicely. Uh, the idea here is just to look for stocks in that sector that are pulling back to the 55 day average. Uh, the support in this one is around about there at 90, so that's where this market's going. Uh, healthcare in a bit of trouble, also below the 55 day average, looking for support at the 144. That's the catalyst to look for there. Real estate. So far, so good. Moving somewhat sideways, not particularly strong, uh, but nevertheless, as long as it stays above the 144 day average, that sector should be okay. Financial sector has been motoring ahead with the prospect of higher rates in the future. So, this sector, there's some ideas in that sector to go and look for. Supports now 3168. Uh, it can pull back to the uh, 32 level. So keep an eye on that. So it's well worth looking at the financial sectors and the financial stocks for some uh, long-term ideas. Consumer discretionary is su suffering. It's below the 55-day, and it's now testing the 144-day average. So it will be interesting to see if it's going to rebound. This looks a lot like the Nasdaq chart as well. So you can see here yeah, these old highs should come into support. If support fails, then we're going to hit the bottom end of this base at 140. So there's some downside risk in the consumer discretionary. Utilities, that's a long-term play, finding support here at the 610-day average, so there's some swing trade possibility there. Energy sector has been motoring ahead, and this has now crossed a lot of the long-term moving averages. So the trend has changed from extremely bearish to bullish now as it's slice, moving through these moving averages. It can come back and consolidate to test the $49 level there but it's now moving into bullish territory as it's now back above the long-term moving averages. Okay. Uh, for the aggressive trader, there was some plenty of opportunity when it crossed these 55-day uh, averages and 144-day averages, so it's grinding higher. So it's it well worth looking at this energy sector for some trading ideas. Uh, there's another energy sector, the technology sector here, in, tr in a spot of trouble, similar to the NASDAQ now. These old highs, should act as uh, support levels. Let's just pop some in there. So it would be critical to see if we're going to get a rebound from these levels as well as the 144 day average there. And consumer staples, that's rebounding nicely from this moving average here. 233 day moving average is below the 55 day, so ideally want to see this back above the 55 day average. And then materials also uh, uh, motoring ahead and looking strong. So the 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 sectors here that look very interesting is materials and then also the f uh, financial services ones, and then energy there. So keep an eye on those. Going to drill down into some of the stocks there to see if there's anything that's pulling back to moving averages or rebounding from key support levels. So, but overall, it's critical for the Nasdaq to come back in with a significant up day. Yeah. If it, uh, what we're looking for is a new rally to start, so we're looking for a spike uh, like this in terms of price action and volume. So if the market makes a spike like this, we know that we're starting to f uh, for a new recovery rally f and a rebound from this 144-day average. Uh, but that's the catalyst we're looking for on uh, on the Nasdaq, for example, on the weekly. Still some downside to this level here, 11,400. So we've got one, two, three, four down weeks, five, six, seven down weeks. It's possible in a very weak market. But so far, a healthy 10% plus correction in the market. Uh, let's just draw this line. We can see here we've got a 10%. We've had more than a 10% correction, 11.39%. Much needed correction after the market became extended. So there's swing trade possibilities back up if we get that nice big volume day and nice positive candle with lots of support in the candle. The candlestick needs to be pretty long, long stick there. So we'll see if we get that today or this week and then we can be back in going long, long the market. But so far for the NASDAQ in a correction and battling to find support for a potential rebound at old highs here. So keep an eye on today's price action. We need to see another big update, huge volume spike, and uh, we need a little spike like this to come through at the bottom end of the chart. Yeah. Until next time, happy trading.